Hey guys, it's Anna, and welcome to my channel. Today, I am going to be tackling arguably the most popular note in perfumery, and that is the note of vanilla. Of course, you clicked on the video. Vanilla is absolutely one of my favorite notes. It, it's really tied that and sandalwood for the top position. I have been working on this video in the testing process at least for over a year. I'm a little bit ridiculous. I'm my own worst critic and a bit of a perfectionist. So when I do these best of videos, I take them incredibly seriously and I feel like I have to try every single vanilla perfume that exists. Obviously that's not possible. You name it, I've most likely tried it. And these are truly the best of the best. In my opinion, we all have different tastes, but in my opinion, these are some of the most gorgeous vanilla perfumes that exist. And I have vanilla in the big fat majority of the perfumes I own, but for this video, I wanted to concentrate, of course, solely on the note of vanilla. So the perfumes I'm gonna be sharing with you have that dominant presence of vanilla. So for example, one of my favorite perfumes is the Seven Virtues Centaur Vani, but to me, that is predominantly a woody, spicy fragrance. And then of course, yes, I do pick up on the vanilla, but front and center, what I'm experiencing the most is woody spicy. So with the fragrances I'm going to be featuring today, they're either like the number one most prominent note or right close second. And then of course we have a variety of more complex vanillas and then more of your straightforward vanillas. So in no particular order, let us begin. The first one I'm going to be mentioning is Celine Black Tie. I absolutely adore this perfume. I kid you not when I say if I was getting married tomorrow, this would be my wedding day scent, hands down. Like I already know. We'll see if that changes by the time I do get married one day. But as of now, this would be my choice. I find this to be such a gorgeous, classy, timeless perfume. It's a feminine, dainty vanilla with a lipsticky, powdery, creamy orris. Touch of a cedar sawdust quality and a clean, effortless musk. It's not a complex scent, but completely refined and polished. It's comforting, just like a naturally amazing smelling woman, like a cloud of this stunning, vanilla and iris. Very likable, inoffensive. This could be worn year round, except for in really cold weather, it would struggle in performance. So this sits closer to the skin. It lasts for about four hours, but it is so effortlessly, breathtakingly beautiful in its simplicity. It's elegant and I just picture royalty wearing this, frankly. If you like Christian Louboutin Luby Rouge, I seriously think you will love this. It definitely falls in the same overall character and vibe for me. So yeah, like I said, if I was getting married tomorrow, you can best believe I would be dousing myself in black tie. Next up, we have a fun one from Imaginary Authors, and that is A Whiff of a Waffle Cone. This is going to leave you smelling like vanilla bean ice cream, a specialty ice cream, okay? It has mixed in strobe waffles, a little bit of a citrus drizzle, like a cinnamon sprinkled in there, and the waffle cone that it's sitting on is like extra toasty. It is warm, yummy. There's like a cold quality to the fragrance because of that ice cream vibe, but then it's very warm at the same time. It has a literal ice cream and whipped cream note. Like, excuse me? Excuse me. And then you definitely get that chewy, 
waffle cone caramel vibe to the scent. I recently gave a sample of this to my sister because she told me she was on the hunt for some warm, sweet fragrances. This is one that I included in her little like sample bag and she loved it. So far, this is her favorite. Whenever someone likes one of my recommendations, I'm like, yes, it's just fun. Like I can close my eyes and picture walking into an ice cream shop. If you don't know already, this was actually in collaboration with the ice cream shop, Salt and Straw. Then we have my favorite fragrance from Goldfield and Banks, and that is Silky Woods. Frankly, people love to smell this on me, okay? When I wear this, people tell me I smell like powdered sugar donuts. And it has a lot more complexity to the fragrance than just that, but that is how it'll translate to a lot of people around me or that's what the, they will tell me they pick up. It's definitely quite the compliment getter for me. And although this is called Silky Woods, the main thing that I get is this fluffy, powdery, yet also creamy vanilla. It's a unique take on vanilla. We also have saffron in here, which adds to the more unique take on the sweetness. It also has a dominant suede note, which is very smooth to me. It doesn't smell leathery at all. It just smells silky silky smooth. And then in the base, I can pick up on some of the wood and tobacco that supports the fragrance and makes it really unique and special. And then I can also pick up on a bit of cinnamon as if it was added to the vanilla, topped off with a cinnamon cream, you know? And with all fragrances, I recommend sampling them first, of course, but this does pull different to different people. So some people will get the vanilla first and foremost, other people get a lot of the suede or the wood. So definitely recommend sampling this first, but that's how it smells to me. I think it's absolutely fantastic. Then a very complex and characteristic vanilla. My favorite fragrance of all time, say it with me, Parfum de Marley Herod. And this is first and foremost, a tobacco fragrance and close behind it, vanilla. It is not your smoky tobacco. Like you're not smelling like smoke or a straight up cigar or, you know, something along those lines of this fragrance. This is, oh, it's like a gourmand fragrance is in that family, but it's not literally gourmand. Like it's kind of on that borderline of like, is it gourmand? Is it not? The freaking vanilla and cinnamon in here definitely give it a gourmand quality. And oh my freaking word, is it addictive? I, mm -mm, I, I drool. I, I have no words when I smell this. Like I die inside when <sighs> Eric wears this. This is your sweet, addicting, vanillic tobacco. It is creamy, it smells so refined. Like this is a freaking masterpiece. Like holy shit, if I've ever, <laughs> if I've ever smelled a masterpiece, I can't get enough of it. And there's no apple listed in this fragrance, but I get a definite apple spice vibe to it, like cinnamon apple cider. And it is the best possible version of that DNA. Like scents like um, Killian Angel Share, Hermes Ombre Narguile, like those are all fantastic and they fit into that, you know, spiced apple cider vibe. But this fragrance just runs circles around them. It has a supporting incense note, which is a Again, that sweet, addictive, unique incense. We have woody notes in the base to ground it. It is so unbelievably, mind-blowingly sexy. Oh, just like the perfect pairing of these dark, sexy notes mixed with these mouth-watering, gourmand, vanillic elements. So it's marketed towards men, <laughs> screw that anyone can wear this. I mean, it's not gonna be for the girly girls, of course, but definitely unisex. If you have not tried this, please, please, please do. Then we have Commodity Gold, the expressive 
OG version. This is my favorite version. If you love Byredo's G Water, you're gonna love this. This is an amazing alternative to that fragrance, but this is going to be more prominent on the vanilla. And it's a vanilla for people who maybe are wanting to get into vanilla or you're not so much into sweet vanillas, gourmand vanillas, whatever. It, this is not an edible vanilla. It's extremely likable, more airy, transparent. It's just, oh, it's just pretty. It's definitely giving the chic, clean girl aesthetic. We have a beautiful sawdust-like sandalwood in the base, a clean musk, and a very light amount of juniper to give the overall fragrance like a feeling of taking a breath of fresh air somewhat near the woods not too near byredo's g water does have more of that juniper note and all of the notes feel a little bit more equal in that one whereas the vanilla and sandalwood have more of a presence in here and then we have amber and benzoin the amber translates more like a white amber to my nose it has definitely like a light, very likable, resinous quality to the fragrance. Like, I don't know, like you have these vanilla fairy trees seeping a little bit of sap. That doesn't even really make sense, but whatever. Um, maybe it does. So pretty. I feel effortlessly beautiful when I wear Commodity Gold, and it's a big compliment getter as well. I think this is an easy blind buy, an easy gift to give someone because it's just so damn likable. Amping up that aromatic feel. So we got like an aromatic vanilla. You already know what's coming. Maybe. Diptyque's O Dwell. This is perfectly combining like the cool girl aesthetic with the clean girl chic aesthetic. Another vanilla that I think would cater to people who are trying to get into vanilla is you don't want an edible vanilla. Try this. You have to be into your aromatic green fragrances. I just find it so cool and refreshing and earthy in a very clean way. That juniper cardamom Elemi resin is just stunning. It has the perfect amount of spice to it, pink pepper, a touch of black tea. Oh my gosh, it's just so unique and I am just head over heels with this scent profile. Like, mmm, juniper vanillas, I'm freaking obsessed. One of my favorite perfumes to wear. You can see by the massive dent. So if you wanna smell like a forest fairy, get this. All right, I have raved and raved and raved about Mikalev's Note Venier. Oh my gosh, talk about a likable, boozy vanilla, okay? We have rum, we have cognac. It is so damn smooth. This is not gonna be a blast in your face of alcohol, so if you're worried about like a boozy vanilla, don't be with this. It just mm, adds the perfect amount of richness, sexiness, sophistication. Stunning. I love the opening, this blast of fresh citrus. That part fades very quickly and we just get this vanillic oil extract booze with sandalwood and amber. I don't get any of the florals listed whatsoever, by the way. So if you see that, ignore that. Oh my gosh, it is so and I feel like I'm gonna sound like a broken record being like, this is one of my most complimented perfumes, but people love vanilla, okay? They love to smell it. It is, for the most part, a very universally flattering and appealing scent. It's so attractive, and this is, I think, a great recommendation for someone that's wanting to, like, step up their vanilla perfume game a little bit. Like you don't wanna like fully indulge into something complex, more out there. You're still kinda like branching out. I think this is a great place to start because it's leveling you up a little bit. It's a scent that I think appeals to everyone. The niche lovers, the people who aren't heavily into fragrance, it's just stunning. And the darker your juice gets, the more rich it gets, the performance gets even better, it becomes warmer, a little bit more woody, a little bit more boozy. I love it. I 
freaking love it. Next up is the one and only salty vanilla fragrance I have ever loved. Uh, they all just smell funky to me. Like it's just a combo that doesn't really work to my nose, but this is stunning. Lancome's Idol Aura. Oh my gosh. It, it just smells young and lively, fun, happy, summery. Like, oh my gosh, a salty vanilla with a floral presence, musky, it's just pretty. The only thing I will say about this is it works magic on your skin. Normally I would say like, if you wanna spray your clothes, like spray your clothes, get more lasting power out of your scents, go for it, do that. But with this scent in particular, this blossoms and comes to life on the skin. I actually don't care for how it smells on my clothes. For some reason, when I spray it on my clothes, it has a dusty quality, but on my skin, oh my gosh, it just comes to life. And this is by far my favorite Idol out of the entire line. I just feel like I'm instantly put in a good mood when I wear this. It smells so damn happy. It's feminine, it's pretty, and it's not too salty. Like some fragrances are really salty or very mineral-like. I'm not getting that with this, but it just adds that bit of a unique factor. It has that bit of like, you know, that summery sea spray by the beach kind of vibe to it, but with like a bit more of a floral take on the DNA. Speaking of summery vanillas, we have Kaoli's Utopia Vanilla Cocoa. And this is the only fragrance that I love that fits into like your summery, almost suntan lotion vibe. I'm not a fan of suntan lotion-like fragrances. I don't care for Replica Beach Walk, Tom Ford Soleil Blanc, etc., etc. So this doesn't have too much of that vibe to me, but it definitely has that. So, but it's the perfect amount to where it just makes you happy and it puts you in that mindset, in that mood, but it's not too much of that. Like I feel like I'm wearing a really nice fragrance. I had a woman write this down the other day when I was wearing it. She was like, what are you wearing? I told her, and then she's like, can you spell that for me? And she's like typing it in her phone. Oh my gosh, it smells like you are on vacation, sitting by the poolside in Palm Springs with like a big floppy hat, sunglasses, you're getting your tan on, you have like a little pina colada on your side, an umbrella in the drink, obviously, for obvious reasons. Your bougie expensive body cream on, it's just, mm -hmm. it's just good. Is just good. I absolutely love their take on these white florals in this fragrance because gardenia and tuberose in particular will often lean mature to me and I'm just mm, not really a fan, but they're perfect in here. This suits any, literally anyone, an enormous age range, like someone very young and someone mature <laughs> could rock the hell out of this. We also have jasmine and just this ultra creamy coconut and vanilla. The coconut is partially giving me coconut milk, like a thick coconut milk with that creaminess, and then also a bit of like a cream of coconut vibe because it's sweet and thick. It has a musky presence and then a touch of sandalwood in the base. I love it. And then of course, we're not going to, we're not going without this one. The iconic Vanilla 28. Hello. A staple, a must have staple in your collection if you love vanilla. This is so unbelievably mouthwatering. I love to wear it on its own and it is one of my most reached for perfumes when it comes to layering. In fact, it's my number one perfume when it comes to layering because you add this to practically any scent profile and it's like 10 out of 10. Amazing, when are show stopping. This is so expertly done, like, oh, I freaking love it because it's taking the concept of a more straightforward vanilla but not making it boring and it has this depth like hello amber wood amber making it warm and deep also same thing with um 
Miltavene and this, the deeper the juice gets, the more rich it gets, the better the performance. Um, that's something that happens with a lot of vanilla fragrances. Sometimes I get uh, questions about you know your juice turning color that is something that will often happen your juice will turn darker with vanilla fragrances because vanilla by nature you know is a dark color so as it macerates you're gonna get a darker juice and that's just making it better it's giving it a little bit more mm. and then of course we have that <laughs> iconic chonka bean and toasted brown sugar quality like oh my god Gosh, it's a crime. It's a crime how good this is. It also has vanilla orchid in here, which is like a very unique fantasy take on vanilla. Ah, I just love it. To me, it reads very much so vanilla extract-esque. A winner. Amazing. All right, talking about a more complex, edgy, oh, amazing vanilla obviously um why a sell baby cat okay it is worth all the hype it is getting in my opinion oh my gosh if you love incense and you love vanilla and you love saffron and you love suede it's gonna be your number one baby right here this is so freaking special i wore this the other day and i felt like my best self i felt so confident and rich <laughs> i don't know it just i don't know it, I, it like brings out this character this character this personality i'm untouchable i'm refined i have old money this is an incense bomb and part of it is like the sweet tone of incense and then another facet of it is the more smoky dry part of the incense so you have to be down with that but if you do if you are, rather, oh my gosh. The vanilla, mm, mm, mm. the vanilla in here is cocooning. It wraps you up in this cloud of, it's unique. You know what, you smell, you, you smell like someone when you wear this, like, should I know you? Yes, yes you should. It has a touch of like a nod let's say to the vanilla in Guerlain's Spiritus Doble Vigny, like mm, 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 that kind of boozy, incense-y vanilla, but that's far more, to far more to toned down on the incense in comparison. And then it also has a nod towards Rosendo Matus number five with that saffron, that very airy, fragrance. So although this fragrance definitely has a lot of character and depth and like punch to it, it also translates to be very airy. Very interesting, very cool. It's ambery, spicy, peppery. I feel very grateful to have this in my collection. So keep an eye out on Selfridges for anyone in the U.S. It flies off the shelves. Mm -mm, yeah. My favorite more straightforward vanilla has got to be Guerlain's Spiritus Doble Vigny. This was one of the beginning fragrances uh, in the start, uh, you know, of my perfume collection. And it's going to be here forever. You can make damn well sure of that. It's too good. It is too freaking good. Definitely falls in the same category of Mikalef's Note Vigny in terms of it appealing to the niche lovers as well as people who aren't heavily into perfume. It doesn't smell like Note, uh, Note Vigny. I always get corrected if I say anything wrong. You guys keep me on my toes. It just has like <clears throat> the most stunning vanilla note like I've ever smelled. It has this very real organic, if you will, perfectly lightly sugared vanilla extract in like its purest, most regal form. And then it just has like the most perfect amount of supporting notes. It's vanilla bam, right front and center. But then you have the benzoin giving it, you know, this ambery resinous feel in a translucent way, pink pepper, a Mm, sweet addictive incense and some cedar wood to ground it. Holy cow. People tell me I smell like vanilla bean ice cream when I wear this. I will have men that are usually too afraid to compliment me. 
on my set. I don't know, maybe they think it's flirting or something like that. Who knows? But they will. They will compliment me when I wear that. Then we have the timeless, stunning, in my opinion, Mongerlan. This is the intense that I am featuring because we have that vanilla quality amped up, but I also highly recommend and positively adore the original. Okay, both fantastic vanillas, but like I said, it's a little more vanilla in here. This is sweeter. It has a little bit more of a creamy vibe to it in comparison to the original where I have, I experience a little bit more of an aromatic feeling in that one. So in my opinion, the lavender is toned down a little bit in here. Still very much so prominent though. We have a very unique, interesting base of licorice and patchouli. So if you're very sensitive to those notes, I don't think this will be for you, but wow, is this crowd pleasing. Like a killer of a signature scent. Whenever I don't know what to reach for, this and the original dumb reaches in my collection. Like I'm always smelling good. It's a go-to. Works for every occasion. It is so feminine, dainty, like has this timeless powdery feel from the iris. A little bit of that kind of makeup like lipsticky iris note. It smells like a princess, I'm telling you. It smells like something Aurora Sleeping Beauty would wear. Absolutely, it makes me think of a Disney princess. Definitely one of my favorite designer perfumes. It's just so comforting and lovely to me. And it's something that absolutely anyone can wear. I can, you know, picture someone in high school wearing it and also someone more mature. And it's just going to suit them fantastically. As long as, you know, they love the scent profile, of course. From the house of EBK, we have Ruby and Vanilla Intense. I feel very rich, wealthy when I wear this fragrance. You only need a little bit, so this is gonna last me a while because it is strong. EBK makes some powerhouse fragrances. This is a gorgeous amber vanilla combination. It's rich, deep, decadent, inspired by an opera house. Definitely smells like, you know, rolling out the red velvet carpet. It smells like old money. The type of vanilla that's used in the EBK fragrances is very unique and special. It smells high quality, it has a champagne-like character, and I really enjoy the mandarin note that's in here as well. And then it also has a good amount of patchouli and wood as well. And the last one, the flanker to that fragrance, is of course EBK Ruby and Vanilla Neroli. And this is, no joke, the only orange blossom perfume that I have ever loved. It stole my heart. I positively adore this scent. I did not think it was even possible for me to love an orange blossom scent because it is one of my most despised fragrance notes, but it's, it's different. It just hits different in here because everything that I possibly hate about orange blossom is not a part of that note done in here. It's not sickly sweet. It doesn't smell medicinal or like sickly syrupy, all that kind of stuff. It doesn't smell like every other orange blossom fragrance on the market. It has a bright, fizzy, citrus-like quality, so that's supported by bergamot, and we get a bit of that quality from the neroli as well. Fresh, it has almond, and then it still has that same DNA and base of, you know, the EBK vanilla, the amber, the patchouli, the wood. And if you do love orange blossom, I'd be very curious to know how you feel about this because as a hater of orange blossom, like I adore this. So if you love orange blossom, whoo, mm, signature scent right here. So that finally wraps up my best vanillas. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you enjoyed, make sure to give this video a big thumbs up and make sure to subscribe down below if you haven't already. If you wanna see me in any more videos, I'd appreciate it so, so much. I hope you guys are having an amazing day and I hope to see you in my next video. Bye.